The county of San Bernardino is the largest county in the continental United States, spanning over 20,000 square miles. Our county stretches from the densely populated San Bernardino Valley over the San Gabriel and San Bernardino Mountains across the sprawling Mojave Desert to the Nevada border and Colorado River. San Bernardino County is larger than the states of Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Delaware combined. The county's diverse geography presents many challenges, including flooding along an expanse of alluvial fans. Let's take a look at some of the great floods in San Bernardino County's history, how the county has responded to the floods, and how successful development can occur on alluvial fans. The flood of 1938 is considered to be a great flood, greater than a 50-year event. In 1938, the alluvial fans in the West Valley of the county were covered with orchards and vineyards. Nearly all of the development was agricultural with a small population of 34,000 residents. Natural channels and man-made irrigation structures handled most of the rainfall. Even so, the flood of 1938 turned the West Valley upside down. Torrential rains produced the worst flooding the region had seen in over 70 years. A late season storm drenched the county with nearly 30 inches of rain in two days. The rain, coupled with snowmelt from a moderate snowpack, created severe alluvial fan flooding in the West Valley communities of Upland, Cucamonga, and Etiwanda. Most of the floodwaters originated from the 8,800-foot Cucamonga Peak. Torrents of water and debris plunged down the mountain and man-made channels, slicing a new channel that was an astounding 25 feet deep and 600 feet wide. The alluvial fan flooding destroyed 1,500 acres of agricultural land, including citrus orchards and vineyards. Countywide, damages amounted to nearly 12 million, a fortune at the time. 1938, a momentous year of news. In early spring, havoc arrived in San Bernardino, California. Unprecedented rainfall and record floods inundated an area of three million population, taking a toll of 87 lives and a damage of 79 million. But through it all, they maintained their sense of humor. The county responded by clearing and cleaning channels at a cost of $45,000. As a result, in 1939, the Board of Supervisors created the County of San Bernardino Flood Control District to maintain the channel system. In the 30 years after the 1938 flood, the valley experienced a population surge and hundreds of new homes were built along the foothills. However, there was little flood control infrastructure in place to protect the burgeoning residential population and their homes. In January 1969, heavy rainfall struck the valley again as a series of storms wreaked havoc on the region. An intense downpour on January 25th produced the greatest rainfall on record. 50 inches of rain drenched Mount Baldy. Redlands received nearly 8 inches and more than 16 inches soaked the community of Etiwanda. Property damage exceeded 23 million countywide. The Cucamonga area was hit particularly hard, accounting for more than 10 million in storm damage. Flooding displaced hundreds of residents, and some businesses struggled to keep their doors open. The agricultural community incurred severe losses. Day-to-day -day business operations and social activities suffered as officials struggled to repair roads, power lines, and other public services. Flood damaged sewer lines and sewer treatment plants posed a threat to the health of residents, but the most devastating outcome was the tragic loss of 13 lives. The county quickly realized modern flood control infrastructure was essential to prevent this type of destruction from happening again. The 1970s ushered in a new era of flood protection in San Bernardino County.
the county sought the aid of the Army Corps of Engineers to plan for flood control in the West Valley. In 1973, the Army Corps of Engineers and the county completed an extensive study of Cucamonga Creek and its tributaries, including Deer Creek. The study explored several plans to reduce damaging floods. Structural and non-structural solutions and other combinations were considered, but the ultimate recommendation was to collect floodwaters at the canyons and to convey them to the Prado Reservoir. The Army Corps of Engineers concluded that a series of channels and basins needed to be constructed to safely convey floodwaters through the developed areas. As a result, they began construction on the Cucamonga Dam in 1975. The project included a dam at the mouth of the canyon and a complex network of channels, basins, and spreading facilities to its terminus at Prado Basin, 21 miles downstream. Construction was completed in 1985, providing protection to thousands of homes and businesses. Several other projects adopted the same strategy as the Cucamonga Dam, including the Day Creek, Etiwanda, and San Savane flood control systems. In 2003, the structural improvements completed in 1985 were put to the test after firestorms swept through the San Gabriel Mountains. The Grand Prix fire burned nearly 70,000 acres over a period of six days. The mountains were torched, leaving an impervious watershed highly prone to flooding. One fire official characterized it as if Mother Nature had placed a giant plastic tarp over the mountains. Nothing soaks in. Everything runs off. On Christmas Day, heavy rains pounded the recently burned watershed, and a deluge of water and debris inundated flood control basins and channels. Compared to the 1938 and 1969 floods, property damage due to flooding in the West Valley was minimal thanks to the structural protection in place. The Sierra Lakes development in North Fontana is a perfect example of flood protection. The developer of this residential project elected to build on an inactive alluvial fan. One of the challenges in developing inactive alluvial fans is minimizing the impact to downstream properties due to increased runoff, especially when there are no established water courses for drainage. The developer chose to incorporate a golf course to collect runoff. A series of basins were designed to store on-site runoff and to provide groundwater recharge. The final product is a beautiful residential development that includes recreational activities. To date, no properties have been damaged from alluvial fan flooding at the Sierra Lakes development. While structural solutions have been utilized extensively in the valley portions of the county, they have not been incorporated in the more rural, high desert areas. This is the case with the Sheep Creek Alluvial Fan. Sheep Creek is an active alluvial fan with its watershed originating in the San Gabriel Mountains above Wrightwood and continuing to its terminus at El Mirage Dry Lake, 20 miles to the north. The apex of the fan is upstream of State Highway 138 with a drainage area of approximately 18 square miles. This classic alluvial fan spreads out across the desert floor to encompass approximately 85 square miles. The area is sparsely developed with mostly two and a half acre lots. This alluvial fan, as with others on the desert side of the mountains, exists primarily in its natural state. The area is not densely populated and flood control improvements are impractical. For this reason, the county requires that any development on this fan incorporate sound floodplain management principles, such as elevating building pads and following FEMA regulations. Due to the West Valley's modern flood control facilities, numerous developments have been built safely along alluvial fans. Unlike the earthen channels that did little to protect residents from massive flooding before the 1970s, the modern concrete channels now in place safely direct flows through the densely populated communities. In the desert portions of the county, where structural measures are not feasible, 
development is allowed, but other types of mitigation measures are utilized. Building pads are elevated, obvious drainage courses are left unobstructed, and in some cases, flood walls are built. While no form of flood mitigation can guarantee 100% protection during major storm events, the structural methods and floodplain management principles of alluvial fans in San Bernardino County have saved properties and lives that might otherwise have been lost. Through our actions and commitment to public safety, the County of San Bernardino has demonstrated that successful development can occur on alluvial fans.